Hello! So today we are going to do a video that I've wanted to do for a very long time, which is a Prodigy synthesizer tutorial. So we're going to take apart and put back together a bunch of famous Prodigy synthesizer sounds using the original hardware that Liam Howlett used back in the day. So we've got a Korg Prophecy from 1995. We've got a Roland TB303 from 1981. Uh, we've got a Roland JD990 from 1993. And we've got a Roland U220 from 1989, which isn't really a synth, but so long as I don't mention that, no one will notice. Right, I've got the poison, but as a responsible adult, also about my person is the remedy. So there's two sounds for this song. Both come from the Roland Super JD or JD990 from 1993. The first sound is this one. Etc. Uh, a little note, I'm playing these badly from the keyboard just for the purposes of demonstration. Originally, they were sequenced with MIDI, obviously. Um, now, this sound is done using the vintage expansion board, which you uh, put in the inside here. I've got it in there, and it's patch number 208. It's called EML Wobbler. Let's take it apart and put it back together so we understand what it is we're listening to. Okay, so EML Wobbler. If we go to the system setup, this patch is actually 35 cents flat. And I don't know whether that's because they recorded to tape and the tape run at a different speed or whether they were trying to deliberately do it to match a sample they had or something. But whatever the reason, if you want to be in tune with the track, you've got to be 35 cents flat. If we come over to the common areas, um, this one is a solo patch with legato on. Um, and if we come to the structure of it, it's actually two parts across the whole keyboard. And the two parts are exactly the same other than the waveform. So I'll show you one and therefore explain the other. Okay, so we go to the wave generator and the waveform for this one is MG Octave A. I think that's Moog Octave A because all these uh, samples from the vintage expansion board are samples of vintage synths. Uh, so I think it's, yeah, a Moog, maybe a mini Moog with two oscillators in octaves. There's the waveform. As you can hear, I think it's pulse waves because you can hear some uh, beating with the two waves there. But it's it's in octaves, so that's that's the first point. So we'll jump over to the filter next. A quick note first, on the Super JD, you have time variant filters, time variant amps, time variant envelopes. That was something Roland introduced in the late 80s. Basically, they're digital filters, digital amps, digital envelopes. Because you have very precise control over what's happening over time, they've called them time variant because they wanted to get that across. It's really not dissimilar to analog. It's just, I guess, a marketing tool of saying, guys, this is more sophisticated than analog. So we go into the filter and we are going to choose a band pass filter. There we go. And we're going to wheel the uh, cutoff all the way down to nine. So the precise values don't matter as much as just understanding the principle. This is what I'm going to keep saying throughout this video. And then resonance 20. So the resonance is quite harsh on the Super JD. So on, on another bandpass filter, you put, might put more in. So you can now hear a dull sound because we're just hearing that band of frequencies for now. So we want to dial in envelope mod of the filter and the envelope depth is 50 all the way up that's as high as it goes as you can hear it whips that band all the way up here somewhere if we just have a little look at the envelope it's maximum levels and then a decay on it you get times and levels on the super jd envelopes so as as we heard it pulls the filter all the way up. So let's go back to the filter. And the next thing we want to bring in is velocity sensitivity. So this is really, really key. And that is set to 50 as well. Getting close already, aren't we? Final little touch. There's a tiny bit of keyboard tracking. So that's the filter following the keyboard. Although it's going to have little effects, we're only playing one note. Very close, isn't it? So let's jump over to the amp. Uh, and we've jumped to the envelope. So I just edited it slightly. Uh, but on from the original, there's just a little bit of decay to it. That's better, isn't it? So it's a basic 
kind of on off decay envelope so it comes on there's a little bit of decay but it's not a super long decay it's somewhere about there i think so that's the amp setup okay last thing we just jump over to the lfos and we're going to choose lfo1 which we're on uh, and that's got a rate of 74 uh, which is you'll hear the speed of it in a moment uh, i don't know whether that's a time measurement or a just a value on the JD990. There's no delay, uh, but the key triggering is on, which means that the LFO is reset every time you press a key again. So you get the same result each time. We're just going to dial that up by an amount of 21 to the filter. And you can hear it modulating the filter. So it's just a triangle wave LFO. So part B is exactly the same other than the waveform. It's a JP8, Jupiter 8, string A. There's the sound. So if we go to the time variant filter, and if I switch between the two tones, you can see it. You can see no settings change whatsoever, and that's the same for all parts of it. So this is just, it sounds like it's down the octave. It's in the same octave, but because the other... Uh, waveform is a sample of two octaves it sounds like it's up an octave so if you put the two together take the second one out put it back in it's pretty subtle but it just adds a, just a little bit of depth to it and then that's it that's the sound so the final bit is that you uh, sequence it with MIDI and get the exact uh, velocity um, values to get the right riff Okay, the second poison sound. So this is not a preset, and so I've had to figure it out from scratch. I think I've got very close to it. So let's uh, take a look at how it's made. Okay, the poison lead. First thing, we're going to the common area. It's a solo patch, um, monophonic. It's got legato on it. It's got a little bit of portamento, just a tiny touch. You get a slight slide between notes. Uh, and the sync master is tone B. So there's two tones active. And tone B is the sync master, which means the other tone that is active A, if it is synced to tone B, will have its wave shape reset by the sync master. So we're going to the wave generator. And with both tones active, we have these uh, synth saw ones. Uh, uh, and on tone A, which is the one we're going to edit, we're not going to touch tone B at all uh, for this. We're going to change it to wave number four, fat square. You can hear that little bit of glide. Uh, and then we're going to go down and we're going to put sync slave on. So now this uh, oscillator is slaved to oscillator B. Uh, and now we're going to go into the pitch. And we're going to go up and we're going to pitch it up 28 semitones. And that is the key part of this sound. Can you hear that it sounds like it's a major third above, but it's, it's a bit different because this is sync. So what's happening is the wave is being reset whilst it's at a different interval and the overtone that we're getting which is part of the harmonic series sounds uh, like a major third so you've got do 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 you can hear those two tones so it's it's a major third but way up um a couple of octaves up and that is the the, the basic you know principle of the sound okay the next part of the sound there's some pitch envelope depth which i'm going to put to eight so can you hear the sound just whips down at the start? So if we go to the envelope, how I've set it up, it's just a little attack envelope, a attack decay. with it. So it just bends the pitch like a drum. And if you listen to the song, you can really hear that. That wow wow at the start of the sound. So that's the next bit of it. Then we're going to jump over to the filter. It's a low pass filter, I believe. Uh, we'll just roll the cutoff down to 62 and then a little bit of resonance i thought about 15 uh, and then we've got envelope 
depth, which I'm going to roll up to 23. So the filter is closed and then it gets opened by the envelope. It's quite subtle, but if, if you look at the envelope, it's, it's an all on and then all off. So it just gives a little bit of sculpting to the start of the sound. It's a subtle thing. Uh, it may or may not be in there. I thought it might be in there. I'm trying to you know figure this patch out from scratch. Uh, this is the amp envelope and it's just an on off. That's the default envelope. And this is, that's basically the sound. Uh, and the final thing is if we come into the effects and go into group B, uh, I think it's got a little bit of chorus on it and a bit of delay. You can see the chorus uh, and delay settings if you want. I've kind of put them on arbitrarily. He probably set them up a little bit differently, but it just, you know, finishes off the sound. And that's basically the sound, I think, and it sounds very, very similar to it, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, there's the poison lead. So, Smack My Bitch Up, lovely title. Uh, the riff is done with a tweaked preset on the Korg Prophecy from 1995. It's Bank B Patch 52, it's 303 Growler Ribbon. Sounds like this. <laughs> So I'm actually going to use the Korg Prophecy plugin for this because you've got nice visual feedback of all the parameters, whereas on the original, you've just got a little letterbox screen where you can only see a couple of parameters at a time. And it's very difficult to follow. So uh, I've initialized a patch uh, on the Prophecy plugin, uh, and we're going to use the standard engine, which is basically virtual analog, and it defaults to a sawtooth wave, which is what we want. It's basically a pure sawtooth wave. We're going to drop it down to 32 feet. And this sound is going to be one oscillator. That's it. You can see in the mixer section here, we've got this first oscillator turned up, and that's it. No other oscillators. We're going to use one of the two filters and one of the two amps because the sound is supposed to be like a 303, which has one oscillator, one filter, one amp. So we've turned up our oscillator in the mixer. Uh, we're not using the second mixer, which is routing things to the other filter. Uh, and we're going to select a low pass filter, which is what it defaults to. Uh, and we're going to use the following cutoff value, which is 40, which uh, on, on this software, it goes from zero to 99. So 40 would be 41%, if you see what I mean. So the sound gets duller and we're going to put uh, resonance up to 70 or 71%. Um, there we go. So now the filter's mostly closed with a bit of res. Uh, and we're going to do the filter modulation next. So firstly, we're going to select this modulation and we're going to choose CC16, which is the ribbon. Uh, and we're going to dial that up to plus 21. This is what it's set to on the original preset. Sorry, it's difficult to get that exactly right. So what that means is if I sweep the whole ribbon, I'll get an additional 21% uh, change in the filter cutoff. Like that, which you can hear we have. Uh, and the next thing is we're going to use envelope generator 3, which is the default filter envelope, to also modulate the cutoff. So I've selected envelope 3 in the bottom corner here. Uh, and the envelopes on the Korg Prophecy work a little bit differently. Traditional envelopes have three time values and then one level value. So attack time to decay time to the sustain level, wherever you've set that, and then a release time. Well, on the Prophecy, uh, there are levels and times, plus there's an initial level. And what that means is um, instead of having a unipolar envelope that starts at zero, everything happens above zero and it returns or you invert it, starts at zero, everything goes below zero and comes back up, you can have bipolar um, behavior. So it can start below zero, go through zero, go back down, or it can start above zero and go through. Uh, so it's a more flexible type of envelope, which is possible with digital. So the envelope values are a zero initial level. So it's starting at zero. The attack level shoots up to 99. The decay level is 20. The sustain level is back down to zero, as, as is the release. Then the times attack is three, so it whips very quickly up 
but there's a very slight lag, tiny one. 18 decay time, 22 sustain, sustain time. It's weird saying sustain time. I'm so used to saying sustain level. And then 20 release. So what you get, you can see the visual feedback, which is why I'm using the plugin. You get a snappy little burst, which will just give the envelope, just uh, give the filter cutoff just a little snap. So you get a little bit of emphasis. So we dial that in and it's only a small amount. It's just 20 on the filter. And here we go. That's with the, you can just, just hear that little subtle snap and then also use the ribbon. And that's our filter modulation. Over to the amp. Um, we're going to go down to the amp envelope here. And again, you've got levels and times, although amplitude is unipolar because you can't have negative amplitude values. You can't have something lower than silence. So your initial level is zero. Attack is 99 level. Decay is 20 and sustain is zero. Uh, there's no release level. And then on the times, it's zero, so it whips straight up. Then 64, 66, 16. Now, the point is not the specific numeric values, but the type of envelope you get, which is uh, immediately on and then a fast decay. So you get a kind of on off. It's not a gradual swell or it's not got a long tail on it. It's basically on off. Okay, final touch. The original patch has got distortion on it. So we're going to bring that in, but it's not cranked out on the original patch. So we're going to crank everything out, as you can see, to 99. Now it's sounding much more like it, isn't it? Getting much closer. And I think the original might have a, just a little touch of chorus on it, which the preset does have. The preset also has delay, which I think he's um, removed. And I think he's actually added some distortion from an external distortion effect as well. But that's basically the patch recreated from scratch. So that now you know. Right, if we're going to do a Prodigy synth tutorial, we've got to do a 303 line. So I'm going to do Claustrophobic Sting, uh, which was done on the uh, Roland Tobias 303. Pretty sure that's what it's called. So we're going to go over to the Mode Selector knob here and click it over to right. I'm going to hold down Pattern Clear and press the pattern number one in this case, and I've cleared that pattern. So we've got nothing in there. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is hold down the Function button. Uh, and put in the number of steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We want eight steps. Then we're gonna click over to pitch mode and we're gonna put in the pitches. I'm on the sawtooth wave for this. Square waves are available. So uh, we're gonna put in seven F sharps followed by an F. That's it, we're gonna press function and then pitch mode and reset the sequencer. It's got a very quirky sequence of the 303. Uh, and then we're going to put in the octave information. So step one, leave it as it is. Step two, we're going to put it down an octave. Step three, up an octave. Step four, down an octave. Step five, up an octave. Step six, down an octave. And then we're going to leave six and seven, uh, seven and eight uh, as they were. Function and pitch mode to reset the sequencer again. Now we're going to go back through and put the accents and slides. Step one, nothing. Step two, oh, it's juicy, a slide. Step three, an accent. Step four, nothing. Step five, a slide. Step six, nothing. Step seven, an accent. And step eight, an accent and a slide. Reset the sequencer. Last thing we're going to do is just put in the note values. So we hit time mode. Uh, and then we're going to choose this button here, which corresponds with the 16th or the, the black circle. And we're just going to put eight of those in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and it'll ping out because we only had eight steps. Uh, and we should um, have the pattern in there. And we do, I'm just gonna put it over to play. So we're actually in the wrong octave. So if I hold down pitch and press the C up the octave, now we're in the right octave. So we can close down our filter. Add the resonance, of course. Bring back the envelope mod a bit. Uh, play around with the decay time. Bring the accents in. We don't want them too much. 
find them like that. The tempo is probably about right. It's quite fast. And then we bring in some distortion from a pedal. And we just ride the, the, the knobs. Hours of fun. And just to note, this works on the original 303, it works on the Roland TB03, it works on clones of the TB303, uh, and it works on software versions of the 303 as well, so you don't need an original necessarily. Okay, the next sound from the Super JD, this is from Voodoo People. So this is, again, a preset. It's called Number 5 Wailing Guitar. Uh, and this one is really interesting because it's less about the sound and more about what distortion does to a sound. Let's check it out. Okay, so as I mentioned, this sound is about uh, resonance and EQ and what distortion does to them more than it is anything else. So rather than take the sound apart and put it back together, uh, I'm going to approach this one a little bit differently. So this sound is made up of three parts or three partials, or three tones. Uh, and the first is this. Which is, uh, if we look at the wave generator, a funk bass sample, surprisingly, up the octave. It's got some low pass filtering on it with velocity sensitivity. And then if you come to the amp and look at the envelope, it's got this slow attack. And then it's got some um, vibrato from an LFO. So that's kind of a surprising start to the sound. It sounds like a theremin or something, doesn't it? On its own. Uh, if we switch over to part C or tone C, uh, this one is completely different. It's just a little click. Uh, and if you look at the wave generator, it is, um, if we're looking at the right one, organ attack. It is a, a, an attack sample. Uh, and if we look at the amp, uh, he's shortened the um, decay. So it's really, really short and clicky. And then the main part of the sound is this one, which is an organ. And it's a sample called Clear Keys. And it's got overtones in it. Uh, and it's running through a bandpass filter with quite a high amount of resonance. And as I've mentioned, the Resonance is quite harsh on the JD990. And it's got, like uh, other sounds we've seen in the past, velocity sensitivity uh, for the filter cutoff. So we can do wah wah with both aftertouch and velocity. As you can hear. So if we put the three sounds together, that's what we wound, wind up with which is kind of surprising. You can kind of hear it, but all the magic happens when we get to the effects, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to turn this down because when we put the effects on, it's going to get crazy. So the first thing is there's a spectrum on here. Put it on. And you can hear the volume jumps, but also uh, frequencies jump out at you. So if we look at it, He's boosted the mids uh, and made it more extreme because of what is going to happen next, which is uh, that we add distortion. So let me go back to that and put it on. And there it is. And we've got such great velocity control over this. It's very guitar-like. And that attack sample sounds like a, a plectrum. So that's great, isn't it? It really transforms it. Uh, and then on top of that, he added chorus. Gives it some width, delay. Gives it some space, as does reverb. What a great sound. Now, this sound 
was designed by the legendary Eric Persing. And I wanted to know whether he'd started off making an organ sound and then put the distortion on and thought, do you know what? This sounds like a guitar. Let's go with it. Uh, And so I asked him uh, and he replied and gave this really fascinating answer. He was absolutely, very deliberately going for a guitar sound. It was already something he'd been um, experimenting with. uh, And it was not only something he wanted to do, it was a priority for him to do when he was working on the JD-990. And the sound went on to be used uh, in a very famous record. So the next sound is from Firestarter, Twisted Firestarter, uh, which is also a preset from the Korg Prophecy. It's a bit of a theme developing here, isn't there? Uh, And this is Bank B Patch 00 Space Adventure. And that sound is heard during the breakdown of Firestarter. Uh, And again, let's look how it's made so we can understand how to make that kind of sound ourselves. So again, I'm going to use the Prophecy plugin so we can see what's going on. So the oscillator types are VPN, variable phase modulation. And what that is, is the phase of one oscillate or one wave is modulated by the amplitude output of another uh, kind of modulator carrier relationship. And then the result is run through a wave shaper, which has got different uh, behaviors, clipping or resonance. Now, that's very specific to the Prophecy and the Z1 and some other Korg synths. Uh, And it's not crucial because the point of this uh, exercise is to learn the principle of the sound uh, rather than the exact settings on the exact synth so that you can make something yourself. So if we listen to an oscillator, it sounds very much like uh, Yamaha's FM synthesis, doesn't it? So what you're trying to do is create a sound that's got lots of harmonics and overtones so that when you filter it you've got something to filter out and then you hear the effect of the filtering more so you could just do it with the sawtooth wave which is rich in harmonics or you could just cross modulate uh, the frequency of an oscillator with another just fm uh, and just create something that's complex like that if we bring in the other oscillator with that they're tuned uh, a minor third apart Uh, and also an octave as well. They're in different octaves, eight feet and four feet. Uh, But the key to the sound is the oscillator frequency modulation from the LFOs. So we modulate oscillator one's pitch with LFO four, uh, and the amount is 39. The exact value doesn't matter. What matters is the amount, the, the, the interval that you get, the pitch interval, and you get this. A trill, right? a fifth trill. So if we go to LFO 4 and look at it, you can see that it is a square wave LFO. It's uh, zero degrees, which means it starts right on the start of the wave and it's reset with every key press so that you always get the same result. And the oscillator just trills um, up and down a fifth, right? Over to oscillator 2 and we use LFO 3 to modulate its frequency. Uh, by 31, which again, it's not the numeric value, it's the the musical interval it gives you, which is a fifth again. Uh, But the frequency of the LFO is different, it's ever so slightly faster than LFO uh, 4, and it's at 180 degrees, which means the phase is the other way around. So the frequency is doing that between the two oscillators. So if we bring the two oscillators in, you get that kind of Uh, relationship pitch wise there's then another LFO so we dial in LFO mod from uh, from LFO 1 to uh, oscillator 2 as well and if we look at LFO 1 it's a square wave again but it's running at a really slow frequency compared to the others and the amount of modulation we get is a tone so as oscillator 2 modulates a fifth up and down it also modulates a tone Can you hear that? And if you blend the two oscillators back together, there's that relationship. Okay, moving on to the filters, we are going to use both filters in this instance. So firstly, we're going to use a low pass filter. Cutoff is going to come down to 70, which as mentioned before is 71%, but it's, you know, mostly open. We then have resonance, which is set 
at 78, so quite a high amount of resonance. Sounds like this with both oscillators going through. So now we need to set up modulation for that filter. So we've got envelope one, it's modulating it by plus 50. And we'll just look at envelope one in a second. Uh, here we go. So it's just a little short attack envelope, attack decay, whoop, whoop up and down. Just whips that filter for us open. We also have modulation from LFO2 at plus 20. So if we look at LFO2, you can see that starts very high and then just slowly comes down. So you can hear it bringing down that filter over time. And the last little detail is that there is resonance modulation from envelope one all the way down to, to minus 99. So what that, that's doing is the resonance starts high, but initially it's whipped back. So there's not as much resonance and then it comes back up. So you get a pull and then a push on the resonance. Which is pretty effective over time. Now the second filter is a band reject filter or a notch filter. And in this case, the filters are set up in series, which means one filter runs into the next or the second filter filters the first. So cutoff is at 20. Uh, and there's no resonance. And then modulation is from envelope generator one at 51 as well, plus 51, and then LFO2 at plus 43. So it's the same modulation sources as the other filter, just different values. So what we've got then is a notch uh, of frequencies that's moving whilst the low pass filter's moving as well. So it just adds another bit of complexity to the sound. Onto the amp envelope, there's just one amp for this sound and there's the envelope settings. You can see the values, but again, it's not the values, it's about the shape of the envelope. So straight up uh, to the maximum level and then there's a decay to a lower sustain level and then it releases a bit of a release, not a really long tail, but not a short, you know, on off either. It's somewhere in between. So as we let go, it tails away and you can hear that filtering going with it. The last little thing we add is just some reverb. Like that. And that's the principle of that sound. And as I said, it's about the principle if you want to make this kind of sound for your music. Now I'm going to take your brain to another dimension uh, on the proviso that you pay close attention. Uh, so we're going to look at this sound. So these are the strings for Outer Space, which were done on the Roland U220, which is not a synth, it's a rompler, but we're all friends. Uh, I'm sure you can forgive me. Okay, so firstly, a big thank you to Tom for lending me his U220. And when he found out I was gonna make this sound, he actually worked it out for me. Uh, so for the next few minutes, I'm gonna take credit for Tom's work. So the first thing we're gonna do is just have a little look at the tone. We're using Tone IO69 Strings 4. Uh, so on its own, sounds like this. It's like a kind of cheesy string sample. In octaves. Okay, so that's the start of it. Uh, then we're going to go over to the level, which is the envelope. There's no filters on this thing because it's not really a synth. Uh, so we're going to go uh, minus four on the attack, which gives us a slower attack. Going to come up and put the decay up to seven. Uh, the sustain down to two, and then you have to put a negative release to get a release. So I'm going to do minus two. And that's basically the core of the sound. Uh, pitch, by the way, is down 44 cents. A lot of these tracks are detuned. I don't know if it's, as I was saying before, because they recorded to tape or whether it was deliberate or what. Uh, but this is another example. There, you can add vibrato. I don't think it's vibrato that's giving the sound the wobble. I think it's something else, which is in here. Uh, effects. Let's turn on ye old chorus. Oh, it's getting nice and wide. And ye old reverb. There we go. And then we'll go in 
and tweak those. So, so we're over in the effects section and I'm gonna put chorus feedback up to say about 31, which is the maximum value. And then we're gonna put the depth up to say, let's try about six to start with. And you can hear that's nice and wobbly, isn't it? So I think that is what was giving the wobble as opposed to the uh, an LFO. Uh, we're gonna go room three on the reverb. I don't know if you use this reverb or an external one, just extend it out a little bit. And there's your sound. Uh, and that's the gist of it. So there we go, the strings from outer space. So there we go. Um, I hope that was interesting for two different reasons. Firstly, because it unveils the source of a bunch of really well-known sounds, which I think is interesting unto itself. But secondly, because it teaches us how those kinds of sounds are made so we can use that in our own music. Uh, an enormous thank you to people who helped with this video, Tom for the loan of the U220, thanks Tom, uh, and my Patreons. I could not have done this without them because I had to buy a JD990 and a Korg Prophecy to do this video properly. So thank you so much uh, to everybody who's made this possible and thank you to you for watching.